I want to encourage our devotees to fill, to full, no, to give us their full attention, and even the devotees who are in the hall. I want to invite you to 
participate and be supportive to the atmosphere by not talking to each other. Mm. I want to greet all the devotees who have come uh, today from different parts of Croatia and Serbia to join us for the summer camp. I know that our uh, Gordon has come mm. and uh, other devotees I saw have also been so kind to give us the association. So, mm. I would just like to brief you in our discussions today, or in our discussions in the afternoon, we talk about the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during his Leela. We had the Ratha Yadra Leela in some details. We had um, uh, a subject crying out for Krishna. And um, now today we will enter into the subject matter, what is the core of bhakti? Now you must know one thing. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches his teachings, he does so through the mouths of his devotees. It is said, a uh, stepmother wants to educate her daughter-in-law then she will say something to her own daughter, but she has in mind uh, the daughter-in-law, but she knows mm, the daughter-in-law will most probably not give so much attention to what I have to say. So let me speak to my daughter. And then, mm, it's like we also do. If I, for instance, want you to understand something, I might say something like this. Oh, Krishna Murari, because Krishna Murari is, uh, is very close to you, to me. Krishna Murari, why do you waste your human form of life? And you will immediately hear, wow, he's talking to Krishna Murari, not to me. Very good. Uh, I will now hear very attentively. So I will talk to him, and I know if I talk to him and chastise him very severely, you will hear very attentively, um, in, uh, because you are interested in politics and conflicts and controversy. So I will make a game as if I'm angry at Krishna Murari. You are not becoming uh, uh, anxious. No? And then I'm sure all of you will listen to what I say. Do you know this is a, this is a psychological uh, way of making someone uh, uh, listening to you. And can you understand what I'm saying? So here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will talk to his dearest devotee, Mukunda. And he will talk so heavy with Mukunda that we will all go like, <laughs> and we will uh, understand well a lot. We will listen to the words of the Lord. So I invite you now to. Join with me one of the greatest revelations in our Sampradaya, that is our spiritual school, uh, about what is Kirtan and how Kirtan is best performed. You will uh, learn this by hearing Mahaprabhu's instruction to his first and foremost Kirtan leader, who was no one else than Mukunda Dutta. My dear devotees, although my words are ordinary words, and although I am a very insignificant, insignificant human being, I still request you who are great saints who have taken birth here in the Balkan countries to listen with attention to what I have to tell you today. Please don't think this Sachinandan Swami is unqualified to talk about these subjects. You are correct, 
But I ask you a question. Does not ordinary well water coming from the Bruna become Charanamrita if it bathes Shanagram Shila? So will my words, which were ordinary words, not become a sweet and relishable for you because they touch the heart of Goranga? Yes, even an ordinary word can become a special bird if it touches the lotus feet of my Goranga. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed in Navadvi down without letting anyone know that he is Krishna himself. But the day came, the day of the Sat Pariya Bhava. It was a time which lasted 21 hours, almost a whole day, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed that he is God. On that day, he walked into the house of Srivas Thakur, he went right to the altar, and then he sat down on the altar and started to show forms like Ramachandra and Krishna. At that time, many devotees came forward and the Lord said, ask me of a blessing. And the devotees said many things. One said, my father doesn't like that I come to the Vaishnavas. Can you make him a little favorable? It's almost like a Serbian request, you know. My good good Priyatelia is against the Hare Krishnas. Can you somehow turn his mind that he becomes for the Hare Krishnas? So, and Gauranga Mahaprabhu fulfilled all the desires. There was only one devotee who didn't have the strength to come into the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That devotee had to stay in the other room, separated by a wall. And he was crying and crying and crying. It is something we can imagine, like, let us say, Jai Pataka Maharaj comes, and he gives the mercy of Krishna uh, he gives us the Shinga oil and he gives us instruction and he says, everyone can come, but I don't want to see the face of Krishna Murari. <sighs> Krishna Murari would think, everyone except for me can come and he would maybe sit outside of the assembly of Vaishnavas and cry and cry and cry. Maybe it's because I did this and that in the past. He would think like this. All the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came on that day to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he blessed all of them. Some he blessed with love of Godhead. Other he blessed with the mystic yoga cities. Only Mukunda was not allowed. Who was Mukunda? Surprisingly, he was the main Kirtan leader of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. He only did two, two things in his life. He either did Kirtan or he listened to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mukunda Datta has a brother. Do you know his thing? Some of you know. Vasudev Datta, yes. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would say about this Vasudev Datta, I am only Vasudev's man. I belong to Vasudev. If Vasudev decides today to take me to the marketplace and sell me there, I will be sold. Vasudev has absolute authority about me. Then Lord Chaitanya said, 
Do not doubt this. This is the truth. I just declare this is the truth. So when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called all the devotees, he said to one devotee, Do you remember when you had fever and you were dying? And there was no doctor? Suddenly a doctor came and cured you from death? Do you remember? The devotee said, Yes, I remember. Do you know who this doctor was? I came as your doctor. The devotee, wow, thank you. You saved me even before I knew of your glories. So everyone came. Now, then finally Sri Mastako came and said, Why do you not call your dear devotee Mukunda? He is the beloved of all us devotees. But Mukunda sits in the other room and cries because you have neglected him. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu answered, You must know he is the incarnation of mercy, the Karuna Avatar, who gives mercy even to the offenders. But he said, Do not ever say the name Mukunda again in my presence. I do not want to see this rascal. He is a straw stick man. Now you might ask, what is a straw stick man? I think sometimes we have straw stick men in our movement also. A straw stick man is a person who, when he is together with devotees, he takes a piece of a straw in his mouth indicating, I'm like a cow, I don't know anything, I'm so humble, I'm so humble. But then, when he is outside of the association of devotees, he will say something against them. In the same way, when Mukunda is in our Sangha, our association, he says Bhakti is the highest. But when he is outside of our association, he says the Lord has no form and Bhakti is only a sentimental feeling towards him without any spiritual value. Therefore he comes here with a straw in his mouth but he hits me with a stick on my back. Bukunda is a straw stick man. When Bukunda heard this, he fainted. It was true. Before he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, his guru had been a Mayavadi, an impersonalist. And he had read with his guru the Yoga Vashishta Shastras, which tell that God has no form. So he had the influence of his Mayavadi guru taken a position against Bhakti. And Lord Chaitanya said he has, by this position, taken a stick in his hand and has beaten me on my back. So Shivas came back to the room and said, Mukunda, you are really in trouble. Lord Chaitanya calls you a straw stick man. Now, he doesn't want to see you again. Mukunda said, Now I know my life is useless. In one hour I will go to the Ganga and I will drown myself. I will kill myself. But before I kill myself, go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and ask him, after how many lives I will be fortunate to see him. So Shiva said, Karanga Mahaprabhu, this Mukunda is going to take his life and he wants to hear him and you will give him your divine audience again. Shaitanya Mahaprabhu roared like a lion. Tell this rascal, after 10 million births, he will see me. 
and Lord Chaitanya said this, all the devotees became silent. But they heard someone dancing in the other room. Hari Bol, Hari Bol, he will see me after 10 million births. Do you know who this was who was dancing in the other room? Mukunda, you know everything. <laughs> and then he fainted. My dear devotee, who was Mukunda? You know he was the Kirtan leader. Let me tell you something about Mukunda. <laughs> In the early days, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not yet revealed himself, Mukunda came once with a group of Vaishnavas to Navadvip. They went where the to place at the Ganga where there were no people because they wanted to worship the deity of Govinda whom they had brought from Bangladesh <laughs> and they wanted to sing Kirtan and hear about Krishna. So Mukunda had come with these Vaishnavas and he was singing a Kirtan but how did he sing? When Mukunda was singing, the whole atmosphere transformed and the stones started to melt. All the devotees who were there forgot totally the word when there was so much devotion in Mukunda. And uh, some devotees came from uh, Navadvi, Advaita Acharya, they heard Mukunda singing and some of them fell before Mukunda's feet on the ground. Now amongst those who came from Navadvi, a very special personality was there, Goranga Mahaprabhu. And he came to the edge of the Vaishnavas who were dancing and rolling in the dust and calling Krishna, Krishna! Krishna, Krishna! Mukunda, Mukunda! Mukunda, Mukunda! <coughs> si Krishna Vanamali! Si Krishna Vanamali! Yes, a little louder, but that's alright. <laughs> Mahamu was internally inside of him thinking, how nice! They praise Krishna. But externally he behaved like an arrogant scholar. He said, hey Mugunda, stop this sentimentalism. Why do you say bhakti is supreme? It's only emotions. Come, come, discuss with me about Gyan. <laughs> No, this is Nimai Pandit, he could not be defeated. And he would always pull the intellectual legs on people. So all the Vaishnavas, after some time, just ran away from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> One day, these Vaishnavas will come to my door and they will beg for Bhakti. But still some time is waiting. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu now heard how Mukunda, upon being informed that after 10, 10 million births he would see the Lord, was, was very, very enthusiastic. Sometimes I feel that in Serbia we think I joined the Hare Krishna movement and in two or three weeks I'm enlightened. 
Then after two or three weeks, we just notice our belly has increased. Then we think, okay, when I'm initiated and get my new name, then I'm totally Krishna conscious. When we initiate it, oh, it takes a little bit more time. Then we are waiting for Brahman initiation, then Sanyas initiation, then Guru, then GBC uh, initiation, but still we are not enlightened. And we may lose our patience. But see Mukunda, he thought of the 10 million births, 10 million, these are not 10 days or 2 weeks, this is 10 million births, he thought, then he will see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It gave him so much joy that when he jumped up and down, Gauranga Mahaprabhu was, was laughing in great pleasure and said, this Mukunda has so much faith in me. I will give him bhakti immediately. Just bring him here. <laughs> and they went to Mukunda and then uh, they informed him, Gauranga Mahaprabhu wants to see you immediately. And Mukunda heard this. He was only a little happy. He was not fully happy. This is a mystery why he was only a little happy, which I will address in a moment. I just want to, now that we sing a little bit, and in your mind's eye, you can maybe see a little bit the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pastimes. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Thank you. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, when you sing the holy names, is there on your tongue? You would be encouraged, I believe. But Mukunda was not encouraged. 
Instead, he said, You have glorified me, my Lord. But I have no bhakti in my heart. Someone who has no love and no bhakti in his heart may even stand before you, but he feels no joy in seeing you. Look at Duryodhana. He saw you when he was there, when you were there in Hastinapur. You showed your universal form. But Duryodhana had no bhakti in his heart. And although he saw you, he didn't feel any pleasure. Look at Hiranyaksha, the powerful king. When you appeared before him as Varaha to save the earth, and he saw you, he attacked you because he had no bhakti in his heart. Look at his brother Hiranyakashipu. You were only an arm length away from him in your form of Nishingadev. But Hiranya Kashipu had no love for you in his heart and therefore he attacked you. But even simple people like Kukja, the hunchback of Mathura, do you know hunchback? It's like the Glöckner of Notre Dame. When she saw you on the streets of Mathura and you asked for a little ointment, she took the sandalwood which was made for Kamsa and lovingly wrapped it all over your body. She saw you. She had love in her heart for you and enjoyed Great pleasure. Or Sudama, the garland maker of Mathura, when he saw you walking down the streets of Mathura, he said, come to my house, my lord. And there he made the most beautiful garlands from lotus flowers. These are rushes, but lotus flowers are also very beautiful. He gave everything to you because he had love in his heart. My dear Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, people can see you, but if they have no love in their hearts, they do not see you. My dear devotees, let us reflect about this. We daily go before Radha Kunya Bihari. But if we don't, and Radha Gopinath, but if we have no bhakti in our hearts, our eyes see one thing, but we don't see Krishna. On the other side, if we have bhakti or love in our heart, we can walk through Frushka Goranga and see the bees tumbling in the air and we will think, wow, they are intoxicated with love of Krishna. I want to be like a bee. See, Krishna and Krishna conscious subject matters, you cannot see through these bushes, is it? The bushes is this. Ojus, the Ojus, Ojus. <laughs> You can't see Krishna, not through these Ashus. Ashus? Yes, correct. <laughs> you can only see Krishna through bhakti in your heart. If there is no bhakti in your heart, you can stand before the deity and feel bored and think, oh, hopefully she marries me. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Slow today, but no 
problem. It's different. When you have no bhakti in your heart, you can sit in your kirtan and hear with your oshus the kirtan, but you feel, oh, when is this over and when do they serve the pizza? <laughs> yes, without bhakti, you cannot see anything or feel anything in Krishna consciousness. This is the problem with many of us. After so many years, our life looks dry and only our belly increases, but not our heart, because there is no bhakti in the heart. Hare Krishna. By the power of bhakti, Ananta Shesh, the, snake, the multi headed snake, carries all the universes on his head without even having a foundation where he rests his, his body on. Narada, by his bhakti, became the greatest rishi, says Mukunda. Vyasadeva had compiled all Vedas, but without bhakti, his Vedic scriptures gave him only pain in the heart. Then Mukunda threw his hands in the sky and said, Oh, why? Was I so foolish and did not ask you for bhakti? Why did I waste my valuable time and not ask for your bhakti? Then the Lord, then Mukunda cried and started to breathe very heavily. And every, all the devotees said, Mukunda, Polako, Polako, don't be so sad. But Mukunda threw himself to the ground. Mahaprabhu said, Mukunda, stop your sadness. What you said was right. Without bhakti in the heart, everything is useless. Look at the washerman in Mathura. For many lifetimes, he practiced austerities to see me. Finally, he saw me. And when I asked him for a few cloths, he became angry at me. When I asked him to do bhakti or devotional service, he had no bhakti in his heart and he said, don't ask for the king's cloth. They belong to Kamsa. If you will ask this again, I will personally report you to the police of Kamsa and you will go to prison. Many lifetimes, many austerities, no bhakti. My dear devotees, please look into your heart today. Is there some bhakti? Or is your heart a heart full of hot material desires?
Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.
this area of granite is just so heavy and impenetrable that only through bhakti you can go through this. These are not the birds only of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Also Krishna speaks about this in the Bhagavad Gita. I think we all remember his words. Bhaktiya Tvananyaya Sakya Ahamme Vamrido Juna Ya Tundrashtum Chatakvena Pravishtum Chaparantapa my dear Arjuna, the Lord speaks to his dear devotee Arjuna. Know from me, only by undivided devotional service, by bhakti, bhaktiya tvananyaya, can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way, by bhakti, can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding? Lord Chandas Thakur asked in Chaitanya Mangala a few questions. Please, my dear devotees, hear these questions. Did the hunter named Dharma have any piety? Did age disqualify the five-year-old Drova? Did Gajendra, who lived by Trikuta Mountain, possess any learning? Did Mathura's Kuta, the maid servant of Kams, have any beauty? Did Sudama Brahmana, the friend of Krishna, have any wealth? Did the social status of Vidura disqualify him? <coughs> no. Madhava was pleased by their devotional service. Madhava Krishna is not pleased by any material qualifications. So Lord Chaitanya concluded, he said, Mukunda, through your mouth, the truth of my bhakti has been revealed. No karma is nothing. Money is nothing. Beauty is nothing. Learning is nothing. Fame is nothing. Bhakti alone is everything. Without bhakti, nothing <coughs> is of value. One who does not consider bhakti to be the highest is inflicting wounds <coughs> on the core of my being. Someone who has no bhakti is not getting my mercy. And when someone commits offenses, Bhakti will flee from that person. Mukunda! Mukunda was looking at the Lord. Mukunda, I will give you now something which not even Brahma and Shiva have. I will give you my Bhakti. And as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said this, Mukunda, became full of tears and the most exalted bhakti bhavas, feelings of bhakti, were appearing in his body. Lord Chaitanya said, bhakti will appear, Mukunda, whenever you sing and the Vaishnavas will get the bhakti and they listen to your kirtan. Wherever I appear, that's where you will come and you will be my singer. 
we have some first class singers here amongst us. If you learn to sing with bhakti, with devotion, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will give you a special mercy. This is why it is so important, my dear devotees, that when we sit together and do the kirtan of the Lord, we do it with bhakti. Would you like to know how to make your kirtan a bhakti kirtan? Why? I think it's clear because you will attract Krishna only with bhakti. If I can have a flip chart, I think Govinda Nanda, you are the flip chart or piece of paper. I will paint you a simple, oh there it is, a simple formula, a bhakti formula. And I suggest we sing while the devotees do the kirtan and then we try to learn this formula and then we sing another kirtan and see what's the difference. Rama, Rama, Hare.
something which is from my spiritual life, a great discovery and I have given lectures in America about this and in England and, uh, <coughs> called The Hidden Secrets of Bhakti. And it is a, actually a very um, a straightforward point, what is the hid, hidden secret of bhakti. It's, it's that which gives la bhakti life or our activities. It's like, so to say, I would say it's like a switch which brings in the electricity and then something happens. Look at this machine, it's just a, a box with metal, but if I know the switch, it makes a sound. So. In Bhakti, uh, there is also a simple switch which, I, which even a person can do who is a beginner. But if this is not known, this switch, even an older devotee for a long time will, will not have Bhakti in his heart and will just miss the whole point of Krishna consciousness. What this switch is, I can best show you a little diagram. One, two, three. Plus. Which we can call the, the three hearts. Oops. Now I hope Kishori will not laugh at me because she went to painting lessons and I will be very unexpert. This is the first heart of bhakti. Can you see? It is a simple understanding that what I'm now doing is for Krishna. I will do this kirtan for Krishna. I will cook this preparation for Krishna. Or when I come here and sit down, I will do this for Krishna and his devotees, although they are not very interested, but I will nevertheless try to serve them. Like this. It's for Krishna. The second heart is another understanding. <laughs> I hope it works. Oh, I'm not so good at this. Hare Krishna. Second heart. It is, you use your sadhana sharira. Do you know what is a sadhana sharira? Sh sharira means a vehicle. This body is called a sadhana sharira. A vehicle for sense enchantment. <laughs> no. Uh, for sadhana. Sadhana means spiritual practice. And what you have in this body is, well, you have first of all the body body, 
Then you have love. What else do you have? You have a mind boy. Ooh. Ooh. What a tragedy. Mind and you have your words, your speech. The human speech is very, very developed. We can sing so nicely with it. We can use it in Krishna's service so, so very, very, very nicely. So you use your body, mind and speech and then comes the third part. Pray to Krishna that this works. Oh, not bad, not bad. First try. For the pleasure of Krishna. This is for the pleasure of Krishna. You want to give him joy. You first go come into Krishna's presence. Okay. Then you consciously use your body, mind and speech. And finally, third point, third step. You want to give pleasure for Krishna. Now, if you do this to any activity which you do with body, mind and speech, if you bring, bring it for Krishna, then you touch with your activities uh, Krishna's heart. And Krishna then starts to touch your heart. And what this means is you become enlivened in Krishna consciousness. Mm. This is a very magical formula and it does work because uh, Krishna can actually be called with this system. There is a shloka uh, Anukul Yena Krishna Anu Shilana Bhakti Bhutama. Any activity which is done for Krishna, Shilanam, Shilanam means an activity with the body, mind and speech. And it is done, Anukul Yena, for the pleasure of Krishna. Krishna, I want to give you pleasure. That becomes energized like my little, my little Ragini machine here, which now, I, see I switch on the switch, See what happens, the electricity comes and Punos Naga, bang, it's energized. So if you learn to switch on this switch, the three hearts system, at that time your life will become energized with Bhakti and it's a whole different experience. Without Bhakti you have not seen anything. Without bhakti you have not heard. Without bhakti you have not even started to walk on the spirit path. With bhakti you are hearing, you are seeing and you are walking very swiftly uh, forward in your spiritual uh, progress. Very strongly it works. Even a new, new, new devotee can find how the power of bhakti is, uh, is moving. Mm. Uh, once there was Akbar. Do you have you heard about the Emperor Akbar? He was extremely tolerant and interreligious. He was a very great emperor, and he had one singer. He was called Tansen. Tansen was one of the two disciples of the famous. Haridas uh, Swami from Brindavan Dham. So, uh, uh, once uh, Akbar said to Tansen, you are my best musician. <laughs> Tansen said, you have not heard the real singer. You have not uh, listened to the real musician. My Guru Maharaj, Haridas Swami, is the real singer. He is the real musician. But he will not sing for you. He only sings for Bhakti Bihari. Bhakti Bihari is the name of Krishna. Ah, 
I said, I, I, I want to hear him. Can you somehow arrange it? Tansen said, it's very difficult. But what we can do is, you can hide in the bushes of Vindavan, and I will go to him and make him sing. So, he, uh, uh, they brought Akba. Akba was hiding. Thank you so much. In the bushes of Vindavan. Oh, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, Tansen went to Haridas and said, Haridas, you taught me the Malara Raga, but I'm not sure how it went. Can I sing it to you and then can you correct it? So he sang, much better, much better, much better. Um, and uh, Haridas, no, no, it goes like this. Then he sang. A beautiful raga. And uh, he carried on for one and a half hours. And at the end, Akba, who was in the bushes, you know, hearing, bang, fell down. <laughs> he was so ecstatic. He rushed forward and said, Oh, uh, Aridas, I'm so happy to hear you. You have given me my life back. By just hearing your singing, I oh, said, Ari does turn said, who's this? <laughs> oh, he's only the emperor of India. <laughs> Acha said, Ari does. Oh, and he said to Tansen, you made me sing for her, for him. Tansen said, I'm sorry, Guru Maharaj, but he is the emperor. He wanted to hear you. Then something very interesting happened. This is the Bhakti of Haridas Swami. Akbar was just so enlivened. Have you ever been at a good piece of art? With a good concert? Have you appreciated? I have appreciated. Once I was invited to Goran, uh, Goran's concert in uh, Dzitsky Hall. And Gora was singing Pa 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 Vi, what is the name? The, 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 the Italian composer? Pa, 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 pa. Puccini, sorry, Puccini. And he sang, and it was so beautiful. And the Croatian TV was coming, and I thought, wow, finally some good music. I also like, like such music. I thought only Robert Plant can sing like this, but our Gora can also sing. And I, I was, when you hear good art, you are enlivened in your heart. You are enlivened. When you hear a good kirtan, very first class, artful kirtan, you feel, oh, the, no, something is happening when there is good art. So, Agba felt like this. He, and he said, here, you are so wonderful. And he took something typical, a bottle of perfume, which was the most expensive perfume, even one drop of this perfume. No one could buy such a perfume. And he gave it to Haridas Swami. Haridas took the perfume like this and just poured it. And everywhere it was smelling. It came in the sand. And Akbar was, um, my Pavumski, it's so good, it's so expensive. Now you have wasted it, it came into the sand. But you sing so well, take this other bottle. And he gave a second bottle. He had three bottles. And again, Harry does it. Put it all into the sand of the ground. Said, what, what is this? Is he an uncultured man? You know, when you give a, a monkey a, 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 a pearl, he will eat it. <laughs> <laughs> then he took his last par perfume and tells and said, No, no, it is good. He is knowing what he does. And again, Hari does went like. <laughs> then Akbar said, My dear Sadhu Maharaj, 
three times I gave you the most costly perfume which the kings of the world want to have and you poured it in the sand. Why did you do this? Haridas said, you don't understand. And he said to Tansen, bring him to my master. Tansen brought him into the Banki Bihari Mandir. Have you been in the Banki Bihari Mandir? Beautiful temple. And as he entered the temple, which was a few kilometers away from where this happened, he smelled his three bottles of beautiful perfume. And as he came close, he saw that the body of Bangi Bihari was based with that perfume. I also couldn't really understand what happened, and I asked, and this is what happened. Haridas only sang for Krishna, and when Tansen asked him, is this the right raga, Haridas knew already what, you know, that Tansen had a plan. <laughs> uh, and he sang, but he sang for Krishna. And uh, then at the end, when Akbar gave him as a reward, this beautiful oil, he poured it meditatively over the body of Bhakti Bihari, who was a few kilometers away, but who received his loving offering because of the devotion of uh, Swami Haridas. So my dear devotees, you do your kirtan here in Serbia, uh, but when you give your offering to Krishna, uh, with the sense of bhakti, the Lord will accept it in Goloka Vrindavan. Don't worry. There is no space and time when you do something out of bhakti. Bhakti makes a bridge which crosses the space and time corridor and reaches the heart of Krishna. And then Krishna responds by reaching your heart. This is the magic and the mystery of bhakti. And therefore, there is no other value in this world except for Bhakti. This was explained through the mouth of Thank you, Mukunda Datta, yes? Mukunda Datta by the will of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mukunda Datta is his main man. And he gave the main guidelines to what is care done. This is here. And that, that three heart motto. Hare Krishna. I would like to see now. Do you have any questions? Short question. Well, look, uh, would you be kind to fix this? see the graph and say what was that all about and then you will think about it a little bit deeper on a second time and then maybe 
also uh, apply it in your life. I think we should we should apply this. You know, no, a normal person gets up in the morning. Oh, it's again too late. Mm. Then one takes a shower. Then one has to do so many things. And one feels oh my rounds, my my krugas, and uh, one has a little time for the krugas, for the rounds. But uh, then the day is there. One has to uh, arrange for the breakfast. One has maybe to do something to to earn money or play, make a few urgent telephone calls, answer emails, and uh, um, of course talk with friends on the telephone and then yeah, do something to earn. Uh, you know, mm, and then at the end, the evening comes and the whole day has been passed with these things and then our heart has remained empty and not fulfilled. We should not tolerate this any longer. Uh, you know, what is a life uh, worth if there is no love in the heart? There is no bhakti in the heart. It's, it's somewhat boring, you know. And, and it's not fulfilling. And whatever we do, we can be successful or we can be a failure, like anything. It just will not really be of any significance. I'm referring you to the life of, oh, I forgot his name, a, a, a famous uh, Roman emperor. He had conquered uh, minor Asia, you know, parts of Africa, Greek and so on. And now he was lying on his deathbed. He was overlooking from his palace the sea of Nicea, I think, um, some part of Italy. And he wrote a very, very famous poem um, where he expressed his profound uh, confusion now that he was only moments away from his death. He was on his deathbed. He said, O oh soul, friend of these moments of my life, where will you go now? What is the use of these hours which we have spent together in this world where you will leave? And he expressed uh, in this poem a very uh, sad feeling of a materialistic person who has no bhakti in his heart, no love for Krishna in the heart. Now this bhakti needs to be cultivated. It's like a spiritual strength which, which you need to develop by practice. You need to apply this model and you will see that each day as you practice this, your love for Krishna will become stronger. It is also that mm, it is good to be in association with devotees who have bhakti. That helps also. Or to read about the science of bhakti from the Srimad Bhagavatam. That helps also in many, many ways. Somehow or other, I think we need in our life bhakti uh, Ben Benzitska Pumpa, you know, Bhakti, Bhakti Benzitska Pumpa. Um, as we move on, uh, we need to go to the Bhakti Benzitska Pumpa. We need to identify this Benzitska Pumpa. Uh, where are they? And, uh, and so on. I remember when I first came to Serbia, I had a car. It was red, I remember. And it could take only uh, super benzene, super benzene, and at that time there was only, you know, Serbian benzene, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, these people on the road, they were there with a plastic container, and you would ask them if super benzene, yes, best super benzene, <laughs> and they would say, can I smell it? Um, <laughs> 
that's not so good thing to see. Uh, and, uh, so on. and uh, I remember that I was always in panic. Will I travel with this foolish car through Serbia because I need benzene scapula, which have super benzene. So I think in our lives we we also need bhakti actually. We need to put bhakti in our hearts so that we can go on in our life and progress nicely. So that that suggestion I would like to give. Mm. Please, please apply this. You will see some miracles in your life. Please do not ignore this, but, but apply it. So we will do this now. We will sing just one five minute small, small, small skirtan and then I will guide you to, to apply this. I request you to just turn around to the altar. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Please look now at Krishna or Jagannath or Gonitai and understand you sit before the altar of Krishna and sing in this mood. You sing now. Yeah. 
use the cook of the body. Consciously use your mind and consciously use the gift of your voice in this kitten activity. Just absorb the body, the mind and the voice in kitten. Krishna Hare Krishna
your body and your mind and your words. And finally, you actually want to please him. You want to do this for his pleasure. Please sing, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. 